this um, the group of people here and uh, we just ask for your um, we invite you into this meeting to just guide us guide our conversations and discussions that we glorify you through our actions and uh, in your name we pray in Jesus name. Amen. well good we got uh, it looked like we didn't have very many five minutes ago and today and now we got a full room so I appreciate everybody coming uh, all this, all this. Um, what I do think I'll do is some folks don't know everybody in the room, so especially for the commissioner's sake, let's just run around, go ahead and say who you are and who you represent. I'm Jerry Smash, representing the City of Jackson Public Works Department. Michael Berner, uh, representing the Chamber Center. John Ditto, representing the Chamber, Greater Jackson Chamber of Partnership. Right. Shokwe Antar Lumumba, uh, Mayor elect. Good. Dwayne O'Neill, representing the Chamber. Ted Duckworth. Representing, I guess, the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Perry representing Helen. Beverly Hogan representing the chamber. Jonathan Lee representing the chamber. Uh, Cynthia Buchanan, I'm with the Greater Jackson Chamber. Good, good. I'm doing all the work for us. Casey does most of the work. Yeah, we got time. Let's run around the room. Tell us who, who we have here. Uh, Keel Bukhari, one of the Mary Lex advisors. Okay. I'm Nicholas Bright with Kipling Jones. Robbie Jones with Kipling Jones. Jackie Anderson with current chief staff. James Anderson, city attorney. I know the moment we're married. Charles Williams, part of Public Works. Erica Thomas, Public Works. Cynthia Stephanie, Public Works. Mary Carter, Public Works. Jimmy Hendricks. Anthony Warren, Northside Sun. Ashby Foot, Ward One. Clinton Van Devener, Deputy City Clerk. Good. Appreciate y'all. I miss somebody? No, the person didn't come all the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I do appreciate everybody uh, coming to this meeting. It's uh, It's been too long since we met, and I think we all agree with that. Uh, we, uh, it's, I was just having this conversation before everybody came in. We, we get uh, told that we haven't met for three three months, and, and it's how we should look at it. It's still too long, but we did we did meet in March, we did meet in April or May, uh, and now here we are in June. So we at least got back to the table in June. But uh, I think everybody around this table, I can say this for the greater audience, or that we think we should be here doing work all the time because there's so much to be done, and in this community, it's a hot topic. You know, every Everybody knows us by by name now. I think if you if not, let me uh, give your phone numbers up. We'll, we'll go that way for a while <laughs> because get a lot of calls on the streets. Most of the time, I call City Hall <laughs> and we look at this one. But uh, there he is. Hey, hey. how are you hey. doing? Did I make a call? You, know. you, you made a great entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just made the most we've had in the beginning of the year. Yeah. It's nine commissioners. That's great, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> uh, attorney, too, so that helps a lot. Along with Zara. There's a lot of There's a lot of views behind the back. We'll see. Appreciate you both being here. So anyway, uh, it is time to dive back in. Today, as we said, it's going to be a workshop, and it's for a couple reasons. We need to be caught up 
where we're at. One, I, I do want to know <coughs> where some of the current projects and the ones that we will approve. We, we need to hear a little update where that's at. Uh, and th I think that would be very important. We also uh, need to do some reviewing of certain things if possible if we have time. Uh, the, uh, you know, I, I guess I'd, I'd just go ahead and say this. That the, uh, the pressure for us not getting together was not good. And I, I know it came last time after we took a vote on, on a, a master plan. And I hope we can, we can get through that too uh, and, and all work together. And it's just encouraging to see every, you know, nine of us here, that makes a big difference. And, and I feel good about that. So I, on your agenda today that we have, we, we talked about uh, the status of the approved product, uh, projects and the leveraging of our dollars. Uh, and then you see uh, Marilyn Mumba's uh, name down towards the bottom. But I may juggle that a little bit because there's at times I think you should probably give us your insight early on in some of these, these issues. So as we discuss, I want, if it's okay with the, with the commission, I want to make sure that everybody uh, welcomes the, the Mayor elect to uh, speak his, his piece at uh, our meeting here today. So, is that uniform with everybody's thinking? Good, good. Okay. Uh, now, because the funds ran out for IMS and they're not being paid at the current time, they're also not here today. Uh, so, we sometimes look to IMS at this point to, to lead us through some of the discussion. Uh, Jerry, I, I, I'm not going to put you totally on the spot, but I'm going to ask you and Charles and whoever uh, how much you can help us in, in uh, giving an update as to where we are at with some of these projects that we that we have approved and where we stand and, and what obstacles maybe are in front of us. And that we'll do that before we go into leveraging dollars and talking about everything. Okay. Okay. I'll just do this kind of briefly and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Charles on the spot for the rest of it. But he's used to that. The first part of it I would say, um, as you guys probably have seen, the major streets has uh, basically come down to Briarwood, uh, which being the last of the six that we would be touching. Uh, all of them are still in process right now because we are going back through. We're having to do, you know, work with sidewalks and some other things that are there to get them caught up. But we do expect them to be complete uh, for sure by the end of the summer. Because certainly they'll be able to get the firewood from there. But Ridgewood does have a lot of, you know, work to be done with the, with the sidewalks, even though it's been paid, you know, pretty well. Um, the neighborhood streets, uh, all in all, we ended up, um, well, the most recent total count uh, of streets done is about 102. I mean, that were 102 streets that, that were done in some shape, form, or fashion. Uh, and we are continuing to do work on that, so we we're fortunate to have APAC uh, continue to, to do that work. And they're going to continue to work until the end of, end of July. So we're going to get several more streets uh, in on that. That's part of the term bid? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can we ask a question about this? Sure. So APAC is <coughs> the ones that they've done, but if there's issues with them, APAC is still on. To well, finish yeah. up or deal with problems or whatever else. That's, that's correct. Right. Both of them. And so Superior will be doing the same thing on the main, major right. streets. But sure. Yeah, if you've got leveling, if you've got the risers, yes. that's all stuff that's, that's, that's in the contract that they're responsible for. Was that something that IMS was watching APAC before that now you guys are, are trying to we're trying to transition to that right now. Were they supposed to be watching that? Yeah, they were. They were keeping track of the you know locations that needed additional work, and so all of that information is you know. Right, for example, I thought one of the reasons, one of the things we're trying to do is build the street so the pavement would be level with the curve. Mm -hmm. But we've gone in there and paved it down as three inches above the curve, but we accept the street and wanted who was watching. I can show you a couple of places. But it's okay. Well, like because I said, it would be what they were supposed to be doing is keeping track of all that stuff. And I think, yeah, and I think to, to, for the most part, for the streets that we've gotten done in the amount, you know, they were doing that. 
I think there's a lot of stuff that we just have to, you know, go back over. It's yeah. typical of any job. You know, yeah. have a bunch of list items. Mm -hmm. Is that way we can get a list of those streets? This hundred and two or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm guessing they keep it to us today. Yeah, yeah we, we have it. Okay. Great. I'm going to let um, Charles kind of dig into, especially uh, Robinson Road. Uh, with, you know, some of the, some of the Can I ask a question? Sure. So you said uh, 102 streets have been addressed today. Mm -hmm. Is that That's right. what is that? How does that um, correlate into the number of lane miles? So total lane miles. That's going to be. I'm going to have, I'm going to, have to do the math. The original concept was what about? Four to five miles per ward. I was going to ask the same question: How many miles that equates? Is that right? Well, that was four and a half miles that we did do about ward. So it was about thirty miles. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now that's not lane miles. That's most of those may be streets with two lanes, so it'd be double that. Double that. Mm -hmm. that, so that was just measured. I can get that information from probably looking at about it. I would say thirty-nine offhand. Okay, but we'll, we'll we can go back and verify. That's just what I thought. Charles, that's just the neighborhood streets. Right, that's not just the neighborhood the street. That's not the major streets. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Charles, you have a little additional? Well, you know, we're ready to prepare a thorough evaluation, but we have been trying to move a lot of these projects that have been designed toward a certain percentage. So. Most of the projects that we have are roughly around a 60% stage. So, for instance, I'll take Eubanks Creek, tributary number six. Right now, we have some information over to the core, seeking permits. The next avenue is go to a 90% completed, but also we got to acquire Eubanks. So that's pretty much the status for most of the drainage projects that were approved by Woodrow Wilson, uh, Eubanks Creek, the main channel, and Bellhaven. So most of those are roughly about 60% complete. We are going to have to obtain some easements in order to move forward and probably some, some permitting issues. On the waterline replacements, of course we know East Over Drive has been completed. The design consultants for both uh, Woodell Drive and Lawrence Road are kind of at that 60%. And right now, there are some decisions that need to be made on Lawrence Road. Woodell, we should be getting those 60% plans in real shortly. Won't need any easement. Most of that work is done within the city right away. But we'll need to come up with some construction funds in order to move that project forward. We just, about 40, well, I guess about 30 days ago. Let me, let me ask a question, Charles, on Woodell Drive. Mm -hmm. We did that May of 2015 when we did, when we did the approval. And in 2016, we repaved that street. And that street, one that got paved either with CWG money or with our money. No. Now, city crews came out and paved that street, I believe, in 14, if I'm not mistaken. We did the one parallel to it. I'd have to look at the list to see if it was parallel to it down there in that neighborhood. But both of them looked like they were paved last summer. I'll to look at it later. It just seemed like the same question would pave it when we're fixing to spend $2 million tearing it up. No. Uh, I'm pretty sure okay. Woodell Drive was paved in 14 with city groups. But I think the mayor made a request to do that. So, but, you know, it's going to have to be repaved again. It's not to the water line. So, but it's our, I mean, the water line is pretty much destroyed most of the street right now. Anyway, so it's just a bad multiple repair. The consultant has started on Hanging Miles Road water line improvement. And they're moving it along with that. I hope we'll be getting a 30% plan approval, uh, hopefully within the next couple of months. On the bridges, we have moved forward with Robinson Road. That project is going pretty good. That's money that was appropriated with DR. The 1% funds were 
applying toward it up front and we'll hopefully get reimbursement for that. Eight percent of those funds that will be spent on both design, excuse me, which is the P and the construction. We completed the Reddick Bridge. The Main Street Bridge is roughly about 40 percent. Got some major hurdles on that particular job. We've got to satisfy some issues with the railroad. And we also got to do a tie-in at West Street that's making that project a lot more complex than what we thought it was going to be. But Michael Baker, the, the, excuse me, the design consultant, has been working fearlessly to get all those issues resolved. We had a meeting with them last week that went very well. We think we've got a pretty good plan laid out to, to get that project on, keep it on task and move it forward. Dr. Williams. Yes. Um, back to the Robinson Road, or uh, Robinson Street Bridge. Yes. Is it still on track to be finished in time for school to start? They uh, talked to the superintendent last week and actually met with the consultant this morning here. And we'll be laying beams Friday, weather permitted. So they are ahead of schedule. Oh, good. Good. What kind of bid came in? The lowest bid was around 780. That's what we thought. The Country Club Bridge is ready to be advertised. We, right now we're working with a consultant for the final plans and setting a actual advertisement date. And also to looking at possibly having a CNI contract with that particular firm. And I, I, I kind of tied up with this. The, the last part of that, of course, the commission approved the MPO project, which were the resurfacing projects. We have selected the design consultants. That is going very well. We lack one design consultant. We're still working, uh, negotiating with them. The other four firms, uh, we've got their paperwork in. We're going to try and get that on the council for approval for July the 27th. The, uh, we requested up to a million dollars. We all fall somewhere around eight, eight twenty-five, eight fifty. So we're doing well with that. And all of those consultants are major firms in the Jackson metro area, and they are ready to, to go to work to get those projects done. Hopefully, we get a majority of those appropriated next year to, to start work. Of course, we have to go through the environmental process and so forth because we have to go through the LPA process, but. Those seem to be on task, and I think I think that's about it. Oh, let me say this: Council approved Brook Hollow Circle on Tuesday, so we are working with the contractor to get those contracts in, so we can go ahead and start to start work hopefully in mid July. Just as a matter of interest, question because it applies to the same thing we talked about a few months ago. Took the is the ninth of March. And they approved it in June on Brook Hall? Yes, we had to certify the bids, and the lowest bid came in at seven. We had money budgeted for I think it was around five thirty eight. We spent 85 of that for CNI and design, so that left us about 453. So we were short about 261,000. So we had to add some money from the reserve account to that project going. I thought we were going to meet over the past two months to bring it forth, but we didn't. But I didn't want to let the contractor go. So, so if we'd met and proved another couple hundred thousand dollars, that could move forward to earlier. Do we have hope that it now won't spend four or five months in legal to get that contract out so we can get work done this year? Well, I, don't, I mean... So we, I didn't ask if you have hope. I didn't ask you if you have hope. Well, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> well, I'm not going to sit here and throw legal under the bus because I, I, don't think, I don't think that was actually portrayed correctly. But I will say this. We do have a process, and it's it's been a good process uh, for us. And so sometimes it may seem like it takes a little bit longer, but, you know, in my, past, in, in my experience being here 15 years, you know, it's, it's done its job and make sure that we get the right person and get the right contractual information and obligations in that contract 
that represents the city in the best interest. So, and some people may, you know, raise their eyebrows at, at that, but it's a good process, and I stand by it. Any questions for further questions for any one of the gentlemen? Other projects? Um, East Over Drive, the, the water line, the paving of the road after the water line, that's my understanding. I think we determined that the paving was in the original spec that was in the project as it was approved, but it didn't get bid to be paved at the end of the project, correct? I mean, it didn't get paid. It wasn't in the bid. Well, and it hadn't been done. I, I, I can't recall that. Well, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I bring that up as an example because I think the the thing that's in my mind that that I really want to get off the list so we can start talking about the next year's projects. We're really talking about, I guess, kind of two years of projects that are out there in process. And there were a number of them that had design work funded, but didn't have funding. You know, the project was going to be way more expensive after it was designed. And did it need to stay on the list? Did it need to come off the list? You know, how are we going to do that? So I, to me, that's what I would love. You know, I don't think anybody's prepared to do that today. But I think at our next meeting, if we could, um, or have a work session, whatever, if we could get to a point where we say, okay, here's all the stuff that, that the city's been working on that's, that have been approved projects, and we want to, we got to figure out if we're going to allocate funding to finish these that have been designed, or take them off the list, and we're going to park that on the shelf because there are other priorities. And so I think that, that was one of the biggest problems I had personally with IMS, is it was really confusing as to what we had approved and we were talking about approving something else, but the list, the dollars were growing that were sitting out there on the table, and there's no way to go, okay, here's what we approved, here's what it cost, here were the variances, and you know, I know y'all had, I think it was this one, where you had some variances, you know, where the, it didn't have funding, or it got moved over here, you know, whatever it was. I just want us to go back and try to clean up that list. So the East Over Drive project is one that just is on my mind, because it needs to be paved and anyway. I will say to to that what you just described that Brucala in the past where it would came in at seven hundred thousand, we'd approve five hundred, you would have just moved money over, but after that last discussion and decision we made, you didn't do it, which meant the company didn't meet, you had to go find it somewhere else. So in that case it held up Brucala, but our night meeting probably held it up too. East Over Drive did, it was a million four forty water lines phase one and two going all the way down to dogwood or somewhere and repaving the street in the documents that we were given when we approved the original list I and mean, i pulled this out so many times to show it when people said no it wasn't <coughs> but we're bragging about it came in under budget because of a million one but it only put the water line in but it didn't repave it or the other end the phase two section so so i mean i'm, I'm just pointing out that it's still on the list from that Real approval and it's those things that were approved. So those are the kind of things that are hanging out there. That but I mean, if you want us to pay you, just say pay you. We've said that for about six months. No, and you didn't. Well, and I think it needs to be paid. brought up it, about yeah. paving it, and you, it was no. Yeah. So we didn't move forward. But if that's what you want, just tell us if that's what you want, and we'll do it. I don't remember the circumstance, but we did. Well, regardless, that's the, you know, in. That's what we need to get on or off the list. You know, I know, Mayor, you want to be able to go out there and tell people what's being done. And when the list is so big, nobody could look at it and go, is this being done or is it not? Because it's on the list like it's approved and it's funded, but we're just designing, you know, or engineering. And so I just want it, we just want it to be clear. I know I personally just want to be able to look at a list. And I like this, I like this format of a variance report, what y'all been doing, because it, for me, it's easy to go. Here's where we started, here's where we are, here's what's left. Can I, can I pick up that? Sure. Is it over yeah. or under? On, on that, I think what would be most useful as far as, you know, on the list that, uh, is what's been approved by both bodies, the, the commission, mm -hmm. and what's been approved by council. Mm -hmm. And then you get a, a true picture of what should be moving along it. That's, yeah. that's, that's a great column, Dad. That, uh, that's not been on the list that way. The bigger issue, though, is that first list we had of May of 2015 had a whole bunch of things that 
we put on hold a long time ago, but it's still being counted as a project. It ain't gone to the city council. We ain't even hired an engineer for a lot of them, a lot of those. And so the question that we talked about last minute, what you're asking again, is let's go through that list and say, is that a priority one? If we want to still go forward with whatever that creek is that's on the top of the list, I okay, can't, you know, or, or not. Those ain't even gone to the city council because yeah. they ain't even gone to hire an architect. Well, you're you're right. right, that is a layer that well, makes it be, that much more confusing. It's probably useful to you all in the uh, public works and the council is having an idea of what data was approved over here mm -hmm. so that they know when it yeah. gets to council how long it's been sitting. So you'll know Time how long something's been sitting. Yeah. It hasn't been presented as to whether to reevaluate it. Yeah. Yeah. Council. It'd be it'd be nice to have that time frame. I think that's that's very important for us to know how they're moving through the system like that. So it's good, good stuff. Charles, you, to me. you know, I know it gets complicated because well, I came on the commission when Tim Ford passed away, so I wasn't here for the first I don't know six or nine months, and and then when I came on board, we had the public works director that was here then, and then Ms. Reddix. And then they, when they left, you know, that's when we started seeing you guys more. And so it, it's changed hands, it's changed a lot of hands. And now it's coming into your administration's hands. And so, you know, obviously it's good timing to figure out the format to get it all the way it needs to work. You know? yeah. so, it, so it's transparent, everybody can track it. Yeah. I think we can all agree it's been overly complicated in the past. Yeah. I mean, we've got a book that's this thick for, we only have <laughs> Fourteen, fifteen million dollars a year to spend. You think we had, you know, two hundred million dollars? <laughs> you know, so. Um, well, the book that that came at the meeting too. Yeah, <laughs> every meeting. Problem. Oh yeah, <laughs> we would get the, the book at the meeting. Most of the time at the meeting. Sometimes that was. Uh, Charles. Yes. Yeah, in change of that, what's the status of the Mill Street thing? Is that the M dot money, the three million dollars, and a little bit of money, and this county money? Is it? You mentioned that a while ago. Just. That's the bridge. No, the Mill Street, we're doing Mill Street South. Then we have a $3 million dollar yes. dot. We right? get a $3 million dollar grant. And we've got yes. some money from the county and our money. And yes, we have hired a consultant, Santec, and that project is moving along. They're doing, doing their evaluations and hopefully we get a report from them soon how we progress. And then we also got to address the Mill Street Bridge uh, within that. And so is it still, is it still wiped out? Well, the you know we wanted to replace it in ten, but didn't have the funds, and so now with the money that was been allocated from MDOT, you know I think it would make sense to to look at and try to find funds to replace that bridge if we're going to put that much money into that particular stretch of that's, that's the one on the yeah. south end of Mill Street that was close. That's the one that's closest to the um, Mill Street. Yes. Yeah. What's the estimated cost for the repairs on Mill Street? I know that, that you know, I'm quite familiar with Mill Street. My law office used to be on Mill Street, so I would imagine it's pretty high. You know. We would probably have a better estimate. There's two things you got to deal with. You've got to deal with the ADA compliance, and then you've got to deal with the actual street itself and the assessment of it. A lot of that is concrete pavement. You still have the you know, railroad that runs along the center line of that particular area. And so, you know, how do you best address that to make a more sustainable pavement over the number of years? Obviously, we don't have enough funds to go in and reconstruct it, so do we go in and do patch, uh, you know, concrete patchwork, and then come back and overlay and seal all the joints? Or, you know, do you go back to maybe a concrete pavement surface? Um, which has you know, been done in the past. So those are the type of things that the consultant is doing now, is they're actually doing a pavement assessment, looking at the width of the street, you know, where we can put sidewalks in, or address the sidewalks that are already out there, and, and get them with the ADA compliance. And then, you know, the actual uh, road work. You know, can we do a building overlay? And then, you know, can it last, you know, 10, 15 years, you know, before we have to do something else? So, Hopefully, like I said, hopefully within the next couple of months we'll get that assessment and then we can determine the best way to utilize those funds or maximize those funds. 
You gave me a lawyer's answer of well in advance. If I remember right, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I recognize that. One. <laughs> yeah, it's like that was three million dollars from MDOT, a couple hundred thousand dollars from the county, and then a little bit of money from us. Is what university so far, if I remember right, it's about three and a half million dollars in it from the early estimates. And you think it's going to be? It could. Well, it, we should, I mean, it really just depends on the condition of the. We started off going to put a lot more money of our money into it until the MDOT money came in, and then we were able to pull our money back out. I mean, we started off going to put two million or something of our money, if I remember right, Charles. Something, yeah. but we pulled it back down when the MDOT gave us they gave the city their money. Good. Um, yeah, can I have a question? Well, no, it's, it's just to, I guess, to wrap up that question. Maybe this helps Cynthia with the minutes of it. Yeah, so, how do we do that, Charles? How do we reconcile what's on the list, what's off the list? Well, you know, if there's a street that, you, as you say, if, you, if, if we're telling you, hey, it didn't get paid, we want it to get paid, or take it off the list. How, how do we get that spreadsheet that gets us to that point so we can say, all right, here's where we are with those projects, and here's what we're looking at going forward? Well, you know, currently the only projects that, if I'm not mistaken, we don't have under contract are most of the drainage projects, which we discussed back in February, and the current bu uh, budget that they have. And, you know, that was Beechcrest, Woodhill Road, Tweezley, North County Club, Parkway Drive, Avenue D, which is Grove Park, Oakmont, McDowell Road to Cooper, Lakeshore Road, and George Washington. So based off those current budgets, that totals about two hundred seventy-six thousand nine hundred dollars that you know we haven't got moved with. That's true, but don't we have a couple of these waterline projects that we've got on this list, like six hundred thousand, the current number the estimates, two point five, two point eight million dollars to build. That means we need to look at them again to see. Well, the the only based off of what I have, the only decision that the commission is going to need to make is on the three that we move forward with. And that is Woodhill Drive, Florence Road, and Hank Moss. And the, the one I'm remembering, I think Lawrence is going to be at 646, but the estimate's 200, 2.8 million dollars, or something like that. Well, the question that came to play was, you know, we the design contract was around 100, about 159,000, and we only budgeted uh, 486,680 dollars for construction. So we are going to need some additional construction funds, but the condition of the street and the condition of the sanitary sewer line, if we just go in and do the improvements to the water line and trench down the road, then we're going to leave a huge patch where we'll have asphalt here and a degraded road on the side. I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying that when we approved it, in trying to decide priorities, we were told it was a six hundred thousand dollar bill. And that's a different priority than a two point eight million dollar, or might be, and it's worth discussing. So those. Well, you're going to have to discuss the real facts of where you're at. The design is going to tell you yeah. that you know yeah. you're going to need to do these in order to get a good street. Mr. Chairman, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Sir. What if the commission kind of came up with a, a status report summary format, like what we want to see, so Charles isn't guessing? And then they could fill it out and put everything in there. And it seems like we're still kind of struggling with, you know, what format, what information we want to have. How do we make it simple so that everybody can understand it? And what we think is simple might contradict with some of what uh, they <laughs> no, see. But I'm uh, sure no, it will. Any um, <laughs> problem with that? We try and help you a little bit and show you what we what we want. I'm not guessing, but I'm asking you. But, uh, I think that would be a good idea. So if you and Ted want to be on that committee. You spoke well, up. That's a problem with that. I'll bring a suggestion. Well, Pete has well, the best list. Can we bring Pete in on that list? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about providing out. a format, right? Right. Just right. format. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Pete can wait ad hoc if you wait. That's a whole other reason there. Well, you know, it's one of those things that takes sort of just sitting down and working on it. And somebody's got to do it, and so maybe we should get be good to get it. Why don't yeah. three of you do it? Okay, we'll figure okay. it out. Sounds good. Um, 
we have folks in the room today that, that aren't usually with us. Just for your information, this happens every, every meeting. We go through questions like this and we get the answers that, that usually that we're looking for. And I'm going to say this more so than we did from the folks that were uh, Absolutely. be our, our project the ones that we get So I want to just again for those folks that think we're firing some questions over here or to Mr. Smash and being and sitting at the table with us is uh, y'all have done wonderful. You've done a great a great job of, of helping us get through what we didn't always have in front of us and, and that's been uh, just invaluable to us. So uh, Charles, yeah, I just thank you. I think everybody here. Totally agree. I mean, so, well, that well known. Don't forget about these ladies behind you. And here. these ladies, yes, yes they all do. I know you all <laughs> jumped in there and thank you. They generally don't get caught in a lot of fire. No, you don't them. get <laughs> all the questions to you, but we appreciate your help. So. Yeah. We want to show you to know that Charles 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 They're good folks. So, okay. If we we ready to move on, you okay? Let's let's do that then. Um, I'm going to ask you: Do you want to have us discuss this item, or would you like to share with us some of your thoughts on on leveraging, or you want to hear where we go first? Let me hear where where uh, if you don't mind. I want to hear whatever you know uh, what the room has to say on it, and then I you know interject myself. I, my basic desire is to. to Take in as much as I can, you know, to, to learn as much as I can. I know what I feel, right? And I, I have no problem with sharing. But I want to, I want to hear how everyone else feels. Well, I, I, everybody around the table understands the, the issue here, and that is that uh, uh, the dollars that we have for the, the two projects, North State Street and West County Line. Uh, we, in a meeting some time ago, can't remember the exact time, uh, we came up to nearly $4 million, said that's what we would approve for the match. And uh, of course now that number is, is, is what, way higher? What is it? 15. 14, yeah. 14, 14. 14. I can not remember, 14, 16. Um, so we're a ways off on that, and that caused us as a group, of course, hesitation where we go, how we do it, you know, if we're going to, we get anywhere from 12 to 14 million dollars a year for the work that we do here, mm -hmm. and if we're taking 14 million, that's over a year's pro, uh, of, of income from uh, what this council has to do, and they are very, very important projects. And we all agree with that. They're, they're they need to be uh, attempted to, to uh, get completed. Uh, at the same time, we, we represent the entire city. And we've got so many needs all across the city. How do how do we put one whole year right there right now and put us in this position? So that's been again for not just a, a reminder for where we were with this group, but for the folks that are listening in the room. That's that's kind of where we were standing at the last uh, at the last meeting. Wayne, so, yes. If I may, um, I don't. Well, we certainly haven't been uh, officially read in to any efforts to leverage the money. Uh, as a commission, I mean, to, to date, it has not, you know, come before this uh, this body. Um, I see that we have Robbie Jones in the room. Is it possible that we could pause and uh, at least have her catch us up as to where we are and officially what was proposed? Two questions. Two. Is that for the Tiger Grant or a lot of money for lots of things? There's two different subjects there. Two. And it's, it's I don't think y'all are single out the Tiger Grant that discussion. Okay. I mean, just I'm, I'm asking. I, I think it, you know the conversation in general. I know I think we've got to have uh, the Tiger Brand conversation uh, specifically at some point because the because the time is running out. Well, I'd like to say something to Tiger Brand if I could before we get into that. <coughs> okay. After our last meeting, when we got so many different answers about different things about what it's going to cost and where it came from, and trying to read through it. I always got a copy of the grant application. I went and sat down with Neil Schaefer's people and said, just explain this to me. And all the parts and pieces. And the question was largely about how do we grow from a $21 million project to a $38 million project. You know, you can 
figure out where the last three million came in, but then you got to figure out how you got to 32. And according to what I was told, it's mostly all tied into the North State Street project. Because when they made the estimates for North State Street, they didn't use reasonable estimates on the cost for replacing the water line, the cost for replacing the sewer line. Mm -hmm. but then because you got concrete streets out there and all kinds of other stuff underneath some of it, according to those people that are doing the design, is most of the cost increase was the water cost three million dollars more and the sewer cost five million dollars more than what was estimated when they submitted the application back in 2015 or 16. My understanding is that over the next five to ten years the city of Jackson is going to be tearing up streets all over town replacing sewer lines under the consent decree. Not every street is going to have to be torn up but an awful lot of sewer lines are going to have to be replaced which is going to mean those streets are going to be torn up which initially I think we ought to have a meeting with those engineers at some time to hear what their plans are so we won't plan to repave the street that two years later they're going to be tearing up but that's another issue. But if the 400 and something million dollar consent decree is going to be replacing sewer lines. Hang with me a minute. If we didn't do this Tiger grant, that several million dollars would be spent on that sewer line anyway in a couple of three years under the consent decree. Now, the street wouldn't be rebuilt, but the sewer line would be replaced under that Tiger grant. I mean, under that consent decree. My understanding. I don't see why you don't put together a different package and say, okay, if you're going to be borrowing $400 million from some source, Robbie, you know, from some source to pay for this consent decree, uh, I don't know who, I don't know where that $400 million is coming from, but that would eventually be replacing that sewer line anyway. Why you don't have an interim borrowing on that part of this until you can work it into the consent decree part. And then you got this the extra three and a half million dollars for the water line, which we've said basically we ought not be doing because that's the water sewer fund. And took the water sewer fund and they replaced that water line, the consent decree replaced the sewer line, and then you took our four million dollars and all the rest of this, you could pay for the project. But it's just putting the money together from different sources rather than just going to say this is easy because y'all got a bunch of money over here, let's go borrow it. Let's borrow the sewer line from the sewer funds and the water line from the water funds and do the road reconstruction and all these other things with what our monies are that don't have another funding source. Mm -hmm. So just as a suggestion of another way to look at this whole Tiger Grant, the solution doesn't have to be, let's go borrow money against our money. Now we might need to, we might even have to advance that sewer money like we've done on the Robinson Road Bridge, advance it until it gets replaced and then get it back into here or something. I mean, that, that's even conceivable. I don't, know how to do I don't know enough about the consent decree to know how they're going to finance and fund it. But I'm just saying they're fixing to be doing it whether we do that type of grant or not. Since uh, don't have enough issues on the table, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have to do more. Yeah. Uh, well, there were a number, if I should speak now, if, um, there are a number of things that I think your question raises. Um, many of which we can explore and see, you know, what are the possibilities. Uh, but we do have two questions on the table as I see it. One being uh, the Tiger Grant, the other being the leveraging of the funds. And I, they're not necessarily, uh, from my understanding of what I've been told today, they're not necessarily linked together. Uh, I believe, uh, I, was, I was informed today that there may be some opportunity uh, in terms of the matching funds that it doesn't all have to be presented up front. I understand that. Too. Uh, yeah, and, and therefore, in, and that has been my, my primary concern as we look at the Tiger Grant project in terms of how it forces the present leveraging opportunity to go forward, right? Let me say this, Mayor. Yeah. From my looking into the same long discussion, it's a council policy or a city policy that requires it all to be up front, but it's not anybody else's policy. It's a city rule that says, if you award a contract for X million dollars, you've got to have X million dollars in the account. But that's a city policy. It's not MDOT, it's not Tiger, it's not anybody else. It's a city policy. And it can be dealt with from a city side so that you can pay it as it goes and it takes a whole lot less money to do it. Mm -hmm. I just throw that out. 
I would take your word for that. You know, I'd have to consult legal sure. on that. Uh, you know, we got some people in the room that might be interested in, in yeah. making a necessary adjustments to that. Um, <laughs> that's why I say it. So that's that's uh, that's important mm -hmm. to to consider. Uh, so you, you know, if the potential, if the opportunity is there, that we can move this Tiger Grant without having to advance all the money, and that gives us a, another opportunity to explore how we do that. Uh, now, the leveraging the funds question, I heard a number of things that you said, you know, even a suggestion of, you know, I don't know how we get 400 million. Uh, you know, one thing that we've looked at, or what my father looked at, uh, it, it was not, you know, when I say a mechanism of, by which we can get more money up front, very careful in those words. Because a mechanism does not imply that all of those funds are to be received through you know, selling off the stream of revenue to, you know, a bank. It's, it's getting a, a larger share of that, those resources up front, and then putting it with things like Tiger Grants and matching grant opportunities so that you, you get yourself more money, you know, to do the projects that are necessary. Uh, and my concern, uh, first and foremost, I would say, I'd like to hear what Robbie has to say and, and share with, you know, the group, uh, all of the information that you, that you require. Uh, and she's been very helpful in meeting with me. She's, they've met with me, they've, they've shared uh, the work that has gone on, you know, to this point. Uh, and it was very informative. Uh, I, I have to admit that I'm still, I'm still exploring whether that is the best way to go about things. Uh, to my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's, this is a, a line of credit with J.P. Morgan, uh, up to $90 million for two years. 80. 80. $80 million for two years. You don't have to use that entire amount, uh, but if you do, once you get to that two-year period of time, we have to make a decision uh, whether we pay that off or you know, whether we extend you know, the agreement with them. And so, uh, and maybe this is inappropriate to do, but, you know, in my mind and the way I process that, I kind of liken it, you know, in, in simplest terms to, you know, you go to the furniture company, you got two years, same as cash, you know, <laughs> no, no money down, you know, and, and, and you know, I, I know banks, like furniture companies, are in the business of making money, right? And part of their equation is depending on how much more money can we draw out of this thing and, and are we taking the risk or, or betting that they won't be able to pay it when it comes and they're at our mercy, right? Uh, sort of. So, uh, yeah. so they are a PDO from offer. Yeah. Is this 80 million interest free? Is that what no, we're saying? No, no. Oh, okay. I'm happy to. <laughs> yeah, let, let's let, yeah, let's let Robbie speak to it. Then I, I'll go into, you know. Robbie. <laughs> We have um, actually prepared what looks like a long conversation, a presentation, but I talk very quickly and we'll zip through it. So first, um, as an introduction, my name is Robbie Jones. I'm president of um, Kipling Jones and Company, which is a broker dealer. We're based in Houston. Um, I finished high school in Jackson, went to Millsaps, and when I opened the firm, um, a Millsaps professor was kind enough to introduce me to the then state treasurer, who asked me very, I want to say nicely, but emphatically, to um, open an office in Jackson and bring larger ideas to Jackson, because a lot of firms, with few exceptions, are not willing to do that. Uh, we're regulated by the Securities Exchange Commission, which among other things requires us to take very seriously our fiduciary responsibility to our clients. So we literally, uh, as part of our contracts, have a statement that says we will at all times, under risk of the federal government, make recommendations that we may not like, that might not be profitable to us, but if they are in the best interest of our clients, we have to demonstrate why 
and make that recommendation. So that's our disclaimer. We were engaged um, actually twice by the city of Jackson. Um, once under Mary Lett Lumumba's father's administration to like, take a look at one single transaction. And we did that, gave a report, um, ultimately got rid of the particular um, instrument that he was concerned about and engaged again during 2015 to serve as municipal advisor, you'll hear some people call it financial advisor, to the city of Jackson. And going back to the fiduciary responsibility, um, one of our frustrations has been that there's a perception that we report to the mayor or we report to city council or we report to certain department heads. We report to the same people that elect anybody in the city of Jackson and that's the citizens of Jackson. So I want to say that because it's been a frustrating thing for us. Um, in this document, and I will, I promise, whiz through it. The, when we were engaged, one, among the many things we were tasked with was a very loosely defined, help us 